Well, you've probably heard it said on other knife channels before. Um, no one really ever finds the perfect knife. And uh, it's very true. Um, I've found a lot of good knives over the years. Um, Kershaw Link, great knife, lightweight, nice smooth action, great knife. Um, one of my favorites. Um, Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Another great one. Okay. Um, and then probably one of my favorites, Spyderco Enduro 4, Stainless Steel Edition. Love it. Okay. Love all three of these knives. Great knives. Um, and, you know, I love the CRKT Minimalist Bowie as well. It's a great knife. It's a, it's a neck knife. It's not a folding knife. So it's, you know, its purpose is a little different than the ones that I had earlier. So um, the carry, it's going to be a little different. I don't carry this as much as I carry, um, you know, the other three. Um, but I do carry it. I do. You will. It is not uncommon to find this knife on my person. Uh, now that being said, it wasn't the perfect knife for me, and let me tell you why. I suck at sharpening knives on a whetstone. It's just not a talent that I have. I I understand that I can get better at it, um, but for the meantime, I'm not very good at it. Um, but, so what I use to get a guaranteed good edge on my knives every time is I use a uh, work sharp knife sharpener. A little pricey. I got mine for Christmas. Didn't really cost me anything, obviously. Um, you got to replace the belts on it every once in a while. Um, but especially you guys that make knives out there, that's not going to be a huge deal for you. Okay, They're like 10 bucks a piece for like a pack of 10 or something like that. that it's not bad. Um, but so what I did is, I don't know if you can see, yeah, there's a sharpening choil on this knife. There's not a sharpening choil on most CRKT minimalists, um, which is fine. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It's just not ideal for me. And so I'm going to modify my knife to be as good as it can possibly be for me. Um, but this, it would get in close and then not sharpen the very bottom. Uh, so I just ground it out, sharpening troll now. You know, now 100% of my blade is uh, usable. Now, you can make the argument, well, you didn't really do anything. You know, that at that bottom of the, at the edge, it, you know, it wasn't usable, neither is the troll. And you're exactly right. But I'd rather have a nice, you know, good-looking sharpening troll at the bottom of my knife than have part of it that's just unground. It just doesn't look right. I don't like the look of that, um, and I'd rather have the troll there. Um, it just looks nicer to me. Um, I think at some point I might replace the scales. Um, these scales are, uh, oh, what's the material called? Micarta. These are micarta scales. Um, they're good looking. They just, I don't know, they're, they're a little, they're a little smooth for me. I, I, li I kind of like a little bit of traction. They're just, they feel a little smooth. Um, plus I'm just kind of itching to do a DIY project. Uh, so I think that would be a good one. Um, make my own scales for it, but I didn't just modify the knife. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't really make any hard modifications to the sheath, but I, I wrapped some paracord around it because uh, I don't know. You know, it's an outdoor knife. It's kind of advertised as you know, it, it, it looks like an outdoor knife. It's a survival knife. Um, survival knife. I, I don't. You know, it's kind of a last-ditch effort, if you ask me. But, you know, that's what it's advertised as. So I think that a proper survival knife should have a fair amount of cordage on it. Um, what I did was simple. I'll show it to you now. It's really not that intricate. I'm sure you could figure it out just by looking at it, but I'll show you anyway. Why not? Um, so let's get this un unwound before I do that. Okay. I'm sure you can see what I'm about to do. Oh, I wasn't trying to do that. Oh, now I've got a mess. Hold on. All right. So this is uh, minus the clip that you may have. This is what the sheath uh, looks like. There, there's like a little belt loop on it. I, I don't, I don't really feel I need that. Um, especially since I, I feel like I could probably get my belt through the cordage um, on the thing. So it would help to have a lighter handy, and usually I would when working with paracord, but 
Wow, I, I genuinely can't believe it didn't cut through that in the first... Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, that didn't really seem to help. Generally, I would have a lighter um, when working with paracord, especially wrapping, you know, a knife. Um, but I have, I have a Zippo, and it's all out of... It's all out of fuel, so I gotta get some more. Um, but for now, I just gotta keep cutting the ends off, <laughs> the frayed ends off, which is actually super annoying and gets your paracord super short, but what can you do? So, what I did, see what I'm talking about? Impossible. Oh, come on. I know you wanna come through there. There you go. So you just wanna get that in through there. Okay. Then just wrap the paracord around. It's simple as that. Take it at the top. Actually, pull a little bit through on this. Pull a little bit through. Okay. And then just wrap it around as good as you can. Good and tight. And this is so. This is such a simple way of getting more paracord onto your knife than the lanyard would provide, uh, but also not sacrificing your lanyard altogether. So you ha you still have a lanyard, as you saw um, at the beginning. I gotta untie this knot from when I was doing it earlier. Okay. Then all you're gonna do is just you want to come to the back on this one. Okay, on that loop right there. And since this one is in the front, is on this side, with the blade facing down, it's on the right. I'm gonna loop that through. Oh. <sighs> Guys, just use a lighter. Save yourself some of the time and effort and use a lighter. This is horrible. I hate this. And it's probably boring for you to watch too, but I just poke myself. I know I'm not doing this right, but I'm trying to cut off as little material as possible so that I still have a fair amount of lanyard. I don't blame the knife for not cutting this. Though it will be nice if I sharpen that. I used it outside. Don't tell Punch Made. Okay. Thread it through without throwing your knife across the room. Um, out of frustration. Alright, there we go. And then, all you're going to want to do is just weave this in. You're going to want to skip that one. Skip this, uh, this loop of paracord, and then just weave it in and out. Weave it in and out. That's, that's what I did. So I got it the way it was earlier. Skip one. The other option is just to loop it under all of them, um, but if you wanted to put something under there, I think it gives you a better, a little bit of a better hold. You know, if you weave it in and out, you know, you want to put a fire starter or something like that right there. It gives you a little bit, a bit of a better hold. Almost done. All right. Oops. I like to just pull it tight. Okay. And so you can do the the math if you want. Uh, it doesn't really bother me that the knot is not on the back of my neck, so I just didn't even bother. Um. But just tie it. You know. However, you, I'm not very good at knots. Um. Just tie it however you want, and then, you know, it fits around your neck. You know, you can adjust it, whatever you need to do. It fits around your neck, and then you can put something, you know, you know, between here, right there, and then pull it tight. 
you know, something right there, you know, maybe a fire starter, whatever you want to do. Um, or, you know, it just, it looks cool. I, I think it looks cool. Gives you some extra paracord. Um, and that's all you really need. Um, but yeah, those are the modifications that I made in mind. Great knife, highly recommended. Um, the only complaint that I have is, uh, edge retention is so-so. It's all right. Um, it gets the job done. And the bead blast, I, I don't, I don't know about bead blast for outdoor knives, um, because bead blast, it does tend to rust and wear a little bit easier and, you know, shows wear a little, you know, you can see the scratches, um, if my camera decides to focus. I hate autofocus. Come on. There you go. I don't know if you can see those scratches or not, um, but there's some scratches, you know, I, I, I do use it outside every once in a while, not really anything too heavy, I'm not out there batoning wood with this thing, but, you know, heavier duty cutting tasks, um, in the outdoors. Um, so, steel, Sierra T, if you're watching this, highly doubt you are, but maybe upgrade the steel on this, um, I don't even know what... I don't even know what steel this is off the top of my head. I, I won't see it anywhere on the knife. But, whatever it is, could be a little bit better. But, gets the job done. I like it overall. Not a regrettable purchase. Um, 20 bucks, just about anywhere where it's sold. And, um, yeah, definitely recommend it. Also, recommend the Workshop. Great knife. Doesn't really get in close to, you know, the, the Ricasso of your knife. But, get your knives real sharp. And you don't have to really do a whole lot of work. So, you know, it's a trade-off. Anyway, thank you for go uh, watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you join me for the next one. Peace.